Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. With over 20 years of real estate experience and selling over 150 homes a year, Laura Sanders is the number one REMAX agent in the state of Florida for 2021. Join us each week as we discuss how to make money through buying and flipping homes to renting versus selling and everything in between. To, to join the conversation, call in live. 888-994-4995, Studio A. Hi, and welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders. Um, today, we have a very special guest. We were lucky enough to get the mayor of Broward County, Michael Udeen. He also specializes in real estate um, transactions. He's a real estate attorney, so um, I've had the pleasure of working with him on several real estate transactions. So I want to welcome Michael Udine. Thank you so much. Or Udine. For, Udine. Udine. I got it right Thank the first time. Thank you so okay. much for having me. It's uh, my pleasure to be here, although I do have to make, I'm not the mayor anymore because in Broward County, we rotate every year. The mayor is like the commission chair and my year of commission chair ended last Tuesday. So I'm just a regular good old-fashioned county commissioner so so you're not in the airport anymore they took my thing right yeah, that goes down right away so the mayor now is Lamar Fisher so he went up in the airport but uh, I still have tapes of myself bienvenidos todos personas latinos welcome to FLL <laughs> I could give you a tape of me in the airport if you really need it or if any of your clients need it but <laughs> it's my honor to be here with you I mean I've we've worked together for a long time I, we're out in the community together. I see you at a lot of great events, and uh, I'm a big fan. Oh, well, thank you. Um, he's also the was the mayor of Parkland yes. uh, two terms ago. Yep, I was um, mayor of Parkland from 06 until 16. That's a long time. 10 years. I've never seen anybody that long. Well, it's interesting trivia fact that you mentioned that. I was... Oh, this is going to be actually probably in trivia because, you know, the only McDonald's happens to be without the arches in, in Coconut Coral, Creek. At uh, Coral Springs? No, oh, Coconut, Coconut Creek. Creek. Okay. Yeah, right over by a township. Right, so I, I was mayor of Parkland, um, and then in the middle of my first term, the voters did two four-year terms. So there's term limits of four years. Okay. But since I was already in there, for they, they didn't count that first few years. So I was mayor of 10 years. I'm the second longest serving mayor, I think, in Parkland behind Mayor Sal who served for about 15 or 16 oh, years. Wow. Okay. It's pretty cool. If you go into Parkland City Hall, you can see little portraits of all the mayors that they've had. Actually, Parkland is 60, 65 years old, and they have a portrait of every mayor that's ever served. Uh, I'll have to go check that out. Yeah, I'll it's pretty cool. I'll have to go cool. check that out. Pretty cool. Okay. So um, I get a lot of emails from you in regards to whatever's going on with the um, economics of businesses coming in and out of Broward County. Um, and also, I guess the job, like wh where we're at, like jobs and how, how is that looking for us? So it's interesting because I think what COVID showed everybody is people want to, and, and our motto at, at Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance, which is Broward's business, you know, getter mm -hmm. is live in the cloud, live in the sun, work in the cloud. And that's their kind of motto. And we've seen now with People can really choose where they want to live, where they want to build their careers out. Um, a lot of people are doing partial remote work, and people really want to want to choose a desirable place. And Broward County and South Florida in general is really taken off over the last few years as, and has become a location of choice for businesses to come here. I can tell you in the last year alone, um, we lured El Al, who they, their North American and U.S. headquarters okay. were in Long Island. In, in, in New York City. Everybody uh, left New York. Everybody left New York. They came down to Northwest Broward. They moved their entire headquarters down here. They're going to have their U.S. and Canadian headquarters. is going to all be done right out of Broward County. Um, West Marine, which is, and everyone always thought West Marine was based in Broward for some reason because they had the big West Marine store, mm -hmm. but they weren't. They were 250 stores based out of San Francisco. They just moved to Broward County. They moved their corporate headquarters here. We had um, Icon International, which was a huge success story out of the Northeast. They moved to Broward County, started you know, the process, and, and in the last few years have pretty much tripled in size and relocated mm. again in Broward. So we, we're really becoming a destination of choice um, for people that want to be a, a, and have this lifestyle. And it's leading to a real estate 
you know. Yeah, I was going to ask you. So, so that brings up two interesting right. topics for me. One is, do we have enough homes? I mean, no. I'm a realtor. I don't think we do. No. Do we have enough homes? Are we? I know that they're building more like in that west area off of Wiles Road in Coral Springs. Right. You know, that's just one area right now that I know of in a lot of little little pockets in Pompano. Um, and so that's one question. And are you seeing, because I get this question all the time, and I don't see it as much in the last six months, but do you see a lot of cash buyers? Okay, so let's take the first question first. What we have, I think, is a huge supply demand imbalance with housing in Broward County in general. We, you know, we, we read all the stories, we talk about it, we have meetings about it, the whole quote unquote affordability housing crisis and workforce housing. And it's real and it's right. become more real as the demand to be here has gotten so much better. I mean, you have the Everglades on one side, mm -hmm. you have the Atlantic Ocean on the other side. We're pretty much landlocked. There's really not many places to go and there's not enough housing stock for the people that want to be in South Florida. You're seeing it in Miami-Dade County and Palm Beach County and Broward County. And what's happening is um, because of that, prices are obviously shooting up for rentals. If you want to rent an apartment or rent a house to purchase a house, um, you know, the, the supply demand imbalance has been a big issue. It's a big issue for employers. They can't get employees to work, right. you know, and live near where they work, teachers, firefighters, whatever it may be. So that issue is a big issue. Um, and, you know, we're trying to do what we can as a county and municipal governments to say, hey, there are certain spots that lends themselves to higher density. So you, I know you know Coral Springs really well right. on university and uh, sample there. But is that, those rentals? Well, some will be rentals. They were going to be condos, but rentals, originally they were going to be condos. They were That's be what condos. I thought. And I was they like, took, oh, I want to buy one. And right. then now I heard they were going to be a rental because the rental market has really exploded also right. as far as getting people into uh, into housing. But they're high end rentals. They're nice. There'll yeah. be more condos that are going to come in. Uh, you know, throughout the area, there's more developers that are looking. But we really have an issue now as far as, you know, getting the housing stock there. So what we've said at the county is if you want to build on some of these major roadways and major arterial roadways, we're going to try and figure out a way with the city's permission. And the cities have to want to do it to have a little bit higher density. So that area in the downtown Coral Springs is a good example. It's, you have to see what they're doing around there. There's restaurants coming in, there's entertainment right. coming in. And really the thing is, is when you're there, you're hopefully gonna be able to leave your car in the garage and, and just walk to everything. Right. We're seeing it in downtown Fort Lauderdale in spades. I don't know if you've been down there lately, but if you go to downtown, there's Greenwise Market. Pompano is great. Pompano is it's exploding. Great. What oh my what's God. going like on If there. you wanna buy in Pompano, call me. It is the best. If you haven't right. been there, you need to go out to dinner to Oceanic, right. you, have, um, you have the taco place you have i mean i've been i grew up as a kid all you had was fisherman's wharf and i remember you and it was like 80 end, cent yeah. beers yeah. and it's just it's amazing now so but pompano's again, made a whole huge renaissance and it's a lot of the cities are like yeah. that a lot of you know there's a lot of good reason to be here and people want to be here and it's leading to what you said i mean for a while you couldn't even a lot of these houses you couldn't get near them you'd go and there'd be 40 offers made you know they, right. you'd ha they'd have well interest house. rates i think made a change on that but yep. but here's the thing i mean what is your thought like I know what my thought is on people buying right now. People are feel very scared and they're not buying because interest is six and a half, which that's normal. So the my, problem is the price is just high. But the thing is, is that if there's nowhere to go, that's going to create the prices to get higher right. again. We're, we, we're imbalanced right now. My thought is it's still a good time to buy. Right. Buy a house. Yes. You're Marry pay, the house, date the rate. You're right. Marry the house, date the rate. You're going to get six and a half percent, whatever, 6.2% right around there, which is still a very low interest it rate. Is. When you compare that monthly payment to what you would pay in rent somewhere, it's still a good deal. And the good thing about that is after you buy it six, eight months from now, if rates go down, just go in and refinance it. Right. I think now is a good time to buy because we're not seeing a lot of the craziness we saw a few, you know, right. last year. I mean, I would never tell anybody to go buy a house, wave appraisal, wave inspection, wave this, wave that. Right. But that's almost what you needed to do back then back because then. there was, you know, all kinds of bidding wars going on. But and there's a lot of misconception. Right. Like people that aren't in this business think that you still need to do that. And I think you should feel a little more comfortable to come out into the market now and make offers, negotiate some. 
once in a while there's going to be that house that I, I have one in Miami right now that they were like they didn't really want to sell it right and you know my client absolutely loved it so there was no negotiations to go right. on but then I have other ones where we're negotiating and we're getting deals so it depends on what it is it depends on what it is um, I think you need to be smart and calculating and what you're doing I don't think you're ever really going to go wrong owning a nice house in South Florida. Are we seeing what we saw in 07 and 08 when the real estate market busted out? I don't think so. Right. Um, I think we're seeing a nice steady demand of people that want to be here. The companies are coming here. Um, and when I say here, I mean, I'm re I represent Northwest Broward County. So if a business moves to Glades Road, right. if a company's coming to, you know, the old, you know, IBM area or the... Right. FAU research. That's still part. That's still going to help right. Coral Springs, Parkland. If someone's coming into, you know, Miramar or, or Miami, that Miramar area is still going to be busy. So, right. I think just there's a lot of strong demand for uh, for for Broward County and for South Florida in general. And and I think that it is a good okay. time, you know, to be in there. Another question, and this is going to be like totally like left field, but city of Parkland, right? Now, I wouldn't want to do this there, but I do do it in other cities. Airbnb, like two things. Number one is how do we see Airbnb? Cause you're an official, like you, you know, you're right. a county commissioner, right? You're, you're mayor, we're, right. we're the mayor. And so you're really involved in a lot of these decision-making right. skills. Like I, I feel like a lot of the Airbnbs, it's becoming saturated and that a lot of hotels don't want the Airbnbs around, so I'm sure it's a discussion that comes up. It is. And so what is that? And number two, like the city of Parkland, like how does the city feel about that kind of stuff? I know Coral Springs will make it very difficult for you. So I, I want, the business aspect of the Airbnb is yeah. kind of appealing on a business point of view. I right. mean, if you find the right spot and you can rent it out, mm -hmm. there's a lot of money to be made if you're right. an owner and you can Airbnb it out. Um, that's one of the major complaints we all get as elected officials is, hey, I bought in a residential neighborhood and now there's this Airbnb that's come in and it's, it, you know, it's upended the neighborhood because you're having, you know, there's loud parties, there's people coming but in. But that's different. That's a, that's a, I don't think they all have loud parties. No, 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 yeah. they don't. They don't. And I think that that's something that you should call the cops and right. like, let them shut it down. Do code enforcement and yeah. do what needs to be done on that. Um, I, I think that there's a place for the Airbnb, and I think mm -hmm. that that's adding to some of the demand. Now, I think from conceptually, that's one of the things that's that's keeping the prices a little bit higher because in the past, you know, if someone was bought another house and they were whatever it would be, they'd sell their they'd sell their starter home mm -hmm. and move into the next level of home. So it was right. it, it kind of opened something up. Now you're seeing people say, listen, I have this home. I, I can Airbnb it out and make a nice income stream right. and then go into my second home. So that that. Yeah, but the city of Parkland is not going to allow that. Um, the, I, I, some of the municipalities have different ordinances. Right. You've got to see where it could right. be. It could be an association that can give you a problem. Definitely if you're within an association. Yeah. Um, you know, they do, they do it in, in, in some of the municipalities. I think you got to be really careful because there is that stigma with the city on having it there if you're not by the beach or if you're not by a park or right. something like that, okay. that somebody would run. But it is a cool thing that's happening and it's, uh, you know, something that we have to pay attention to in the industry. So just want to let everyone know that today we're airing live right now. And if you do want to call in with any questions for Michael or myself, you can call 1-888-994-4995. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock, we'll be airing the show again on 95.3, 96.9, 95.9, 106.9, and AM radio 1470. So stay tuned right now. We're going to run to commercial for our new sponsor, Max Fish. And he can help you with 2-1 buy down to get a lower rate. Whether you're buying, selling, refinancing, or building your dream home, you have a lot riding on your loan specialist. Max Fish, a top 1% mortgage loan officer in the nation, will give you a same-day qualifying quote. Max Fish is committed to providing his customers with mortgage services that exceed their expectations, ensuring that you make the right choice for you and your family is his ultimate goal. Contact Max Fish today at 954-729-6933 or max.fisch at nwm.com.
corp.net. You have been watching Making Money with Laura. For more information, contact Laura Sanders at 954-650-0827 or visit her website at thelauracell.com. And now back to the show. Welcome back. We're here with Michael Udine, Mayor of Broward County. Well, just recently. Broward County Commissioner. Commissioner now. <laughs> um, just want to remind everybody that this is going to run again tomorrow night at 8 o'clock on 95.3, 96.9, 95.9, 106.9, and AM Radio F. 1470. So, so they better mark their calendars for tomorrow yes, night. Yes, so you can listen Book again because I'm going to listen and yeah, then. Yeah, I'm going to listen too. Yeah, I'm going to listen gonna and see. I'm going to critique myself. Wait, what's tomorrow night? Oh, well, Tuesday. yeah. Tuesday, okay. I don't know. This month is crazy. All these parties, all these places you have to go. So don't drink and drive. It's not right. good for you because the county's the probably county's, got extra they people. They probably out. have extra people out that are looking. Yeah. And it's interesting that you say it's so busy in the county. One of the areas that it's really busy now this time of year, mm -hmm. we were just talking about it, is the airport. Right. You know, people, you know, come flying in and out the seaport, the convention mm -hmm. center, because they have a lot, lot going on. And Broward County, really, those are our three main economic engines. Our airport, believe it or not, is busier than pre-pandemic levels. FLL has Crazy. exceeded the numbers from from back then. Um, if you're if you're by there, you know, I, this question, I get this question all the time. What's going on at the airport and when's the construction going to be over? Uh, and never. I, <laughs> That, that's the answer, but pretty much never. Oh I mean, gosh. they're always adding because there's so many different uh, airlines that want to fly here and people that want to be here. We just opened up uh, a Centurion Lounge by the JetBlue Terminal and American okay. Express Centurion So how do you Lounge. get in that? If you're, an, if you're an Amex holder, you can get in there okay. or you can buy like a day pass. And it's, it, it's, it's cool because... FLL used to be like the alternate airport to Miami. So you would, if you were in traveling, you'd use right. Miami, but you know, but whatever. But now we have the century. FLL is becoming an airport of choice now for travelers. They want to come through FLL. They want to fly in and out of here. They want to have the amenities that we have there. And it's great. There's no tax dollars really there. The airport's an enterprise zone. So mm -hmm. they, all the money that they make, they use for the expansion. Taxpayers aren't paying for it. And it leads to a ton of jobs, a ton of people working out of the airport. And it's been a big uh, economic development engine for this area. Yeah. And it's been a big real estate thing because a lot of people commute back and forth to other areas of, right. the, of the country, especially now. They're going to New York and working two days and then coming down here and working remotely for the rest of the, you know, right. they're doing what they need to do. And FLL is a good airport to get in and out of. And you mentioned pre-pandemic, but I just saw an article this morning and, I, you know, they catch you with these like little, you know, and I don't pay for Sun Sentinel on my phone. So <laughs> um, it said that, I guess, Los Angeles is going back into masks again required at their airport. So do you foresee any of that happening here? I hope not. Okay. I mean, I don't, you know, the, there's different things that come from the FAA, from the federal government. But I think we even Florida have seen. Um, Lack, laxed. I think we've seen what people, be careful, but understand, you know, do what you need to do to protect yourself. Listen, if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. But right. I don't think forcing it has really done anything, you know, to really help health wise. And I think it's been more important to be more open. You know, I've tried to say, and I said this while I was mayor, while I was commission on the commission, when this was going on, get healthy, get healthy, you know, it, it, be, get outside, exercise, get yourself together. And, you know, then you'll have a better experience no matter what, right. no matter what happens with any of this. So I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. What, you know, when we talk about the, the pandemic, though, cruising was really hit. Our passenger cruising. Yeah. Um, That's busy now. It's huge. Uh, you Everybody know, Port, went for Thanksgiving. Port I mean. Everglades is, we've lured Disney. Disney's home port now will be Cape That's Canaveral. That's nice because we were going, yeah, we were going all the way. Right. Broward County will now have Disney ships starting out of there. So Broward has really become the happiest place awesome. on earth, just like <laughs> Disney World. Um, if you built, haven't been on a Disney cruise, and I know you, they don't have gambling on there, but honestly, but if you have children, it's the best place. They have little like they're like air tags on your kid, and right. you can find your kids wherever they're at. Like 
you, if they went overboard, you know. And, and right, you jump in and get Yeah, them. right. So, well, but, maybe. But or you just watch them. Swim. No, I'm just you, kidding. You I, I love right? my children. Yeah. <laughs> but they do. It's really cool. They have air tags, and it, you know exactly where your kid is. So Disney, actually, they're going to be building the addition into their facility in Port Everglades. They want it to be the experience, right? When you get out of your car, you're going to walk right through the Disney kind of oh. terminal into Port Everglades. So we got Disney. We got American Queen Voyages came down. We have a lot of, you know, six or seven big ships are now home porting out of Port Everglades. So it's been really busy. And Port Everglades also does cargo. Okay. Um, we've made a big investment. So, so we have post Panamax ships coming here. He, we're, we're helping to solve the supply chain uh, in the country. And it's jobs. And it's people right. that are buying houses that are working through the port. Now, there's still be in, they'll still be up in... Um they were up in um, up Cape by Canaveral. Cape Canaveral. Are they yeah. still going to be out They'll of there? They'll still have there. This will be their okay. second They'll home be port. Second. Okay. But you know the cargo and all these all these are jobs that generate yeah. in Broward County. I mean, you don't think of it, but when these cruise ships come in, there's a there's a few warehouses in the western right. part of the county that service the cruise ships. They're they're out there and they bring them the food and whatnot. And the last part of our port. And I get asked this all the time, especially when we have one of those uh, mm -hmm. whirly things in the ocean called a hurricane. All of our petroleum south of Orlando pretty uh -huh. much comes through Port Everglades. Okay. Jet fuel, auto fuel, everything comes in through Port Everglades. So I haven't um, been down there in a long time. It's really and cool. Do you remember when there was all the nightclubs down there? Yeah. Whatever happened to that down there? So they're doing a lot of rehabs of a lot of different... Of, of those different shopping centers that were down there. A lot they of closed the, down, though. A lot okay. of them closed down because we're expanding the convention center. Okay. So the convention center is on the port property. We're putting a multi, you know, like hundreds of millions of dollars into the convention center with the help of the hoteliers. They want it to happen, the hotels around the right. area. And we're building a huge headquarter hotel at the port. We're going to build an omni-branded oh. hotel. Okay. We're going to have the big conventions again. So like when you go to the realtor convention, you probably go to the one in Vegas or in Chicago or somewhere. Right. We're going to be able to compete for those real big conventions. We have mid-level conventions now, but we'll go after some of the big boys. And again, jobs, okay. economic development, all coming out of that What about area. parking? I found it wasn't safe to go down there at nighttime if you... No, no, no. Back the, then, I mean, it's been a long time for me. I mean, I'm, so... So the Port Everglades, the airport, that area is safe. I think the downtown area, mm -hmm. you know, in, back in the past used to get a little bit of a bad rap, you know, downtown. Well, Fort, okay, so downtown now, Fort Lauderdale where they, they actually taped, um, oh, my God, the, the, the Nerds. Revenge of the Re Nerds was right. taped downtown where, and then we had Art Bar down there. Right, and we and had, had a lot Ugly of Tuna, and, and so all that's gone. What's the, You're seeing yeah. now, you're seeing Fort Lauderdale become a 24-hour city. So... There's no like fear that you have going downtown. It's beautiful. There's 24-hour buildings that are there. People are living down there. They actually put a Publix green market right down at the main and main building. And you know okay. if you're getting a Publix down there, it's a 24-hour type city. So I go down there a lot. My wife and I go down to, you know, downtown Fort Lauderdale, hang out. Great restaurants right. are there. But I noticed I was down there to go to the Performing Arts Center on a, maybe it was a Tuesday night or something. It was dead. That area is on the other side because Dicey they're doing Riley's some, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Though, that area there, they're really starting more of the makeover. That area there is getting okay. more investment coming slammed. in there. So it used to be very busy there. The trains through Brightline, mm -hmm. you know, that that's becoming more of a. They're going to rehab more of that area okay. as we as we go to that side towards the towards the Performing okay. Arts Center. You had a major investment by the Panthers with and, and War Memorial Auditorium okay. with the city. Brightline's made a major investment, um, and they'll act, we're, we're in Boca now. They're going to open a stadium, uh, station here, uh, in in Boca for Brightline. So it'll be Boca, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, West Palm, and I use Brightline a lot. If you go to a Heat game, I was listening to it this morning on this. If you go to a Heat game, yeah, Br the Brightline Heat Express. So you park at the Brightline station instead of paying 20, 30, 40 bucks to park at the arena. Uh -huh. you, you go there, you pay for your ticket on Brightline, they mm -hmm. give you a drink, and they wait. The trains wait till after the game. So if the game goes to overtime, there's still trains waiting for you because they know it's the Heat Express that night, and they'll make sure that the last train comes back. To, yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of, I think that you've brought up that there's a lot of cool things in a lot Broward of cool things. that we don't even know about. 100%. Um, that, that would be good. I mean, so. 
for realtors, what would be a good way for them to get more information to provide this to buyers when coming out of state? 100% Broward.org website, the okay. Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance website. Visit Lauderdale, which is our tourism um, to our tourism arm. You know, they're out trying right. to lure de to market our Broward okay. County as a destination. They did something, and I, I put it out on my social media, where they had a bar crawl where they showed you all the different craft you breweries. Put, wait, the mayor put out a bar crawl? I put out a bar crawl where he tells you where <laughs> okay, all the craft breweries are. we know we have an are. awesome, well, he's not the mayor anymore. Right, but it Maybe was awesome. Year. Maybe I bar, next year. Because I bar crawl, so yeah. we put out the bar crawl. We have a ton. But he takes the bright line, he does not drink and drive. I do not drink and drive. Yes. I Uber. Yes. We um we have bright line, we have uh, many craft breweries. Right. We have a very, a vigorous cultural and arts department in Broward County. I mean, the stuff that makes it fun to be in a place, we have a lot of. You, you mentioned the Performing Arts Center, yeah. Parker Playhouse, all the different places, yeah. the museums, and all that stuff. We're doing a big report to um, say what the economic impact of that is. So we have a good story, and I'm happy to tell it, and okay. I'm happy to join your And she's going to have to come back again because we are running out of time, unfortunately. So. Listen tomorrow night again yes. so you can get all these websites, everything that he's given you tomorrow night, 95.3, 96.9, 95.9, 106.9, and 14.70 a.m. tomorrow, 8 o'clock, you can listen I'll to... I'll be there. You'll be there, I'll wherever be there. that is, Wherever right? that is. Ma well, ex-mayor of Broward <laughs> County, Michael Udine, also still on the county, county commission. commission. So we are so blessed to have had him today and thank you. thank you for coming. And if you need any real estate help, call me at 954-650-0827. Laura Sanders, Making Money With Me. Thank you for tuning in for Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. To join the conversation, call us at the studio, 888-994-4995-STUDIO-8 or contact Laura directly at 954-650-0827. Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. We look forward to seeing you.